Very good morning and a very warm welcome to episode 38 of Golden Hill at School's Golden Moments. This week we're up in the science area where we've had some students working on a science fair and in particular they've been developing their love and understanding of science and I'm going to hand over now to Mr Parrock who is the interim faculty leader for science and he's going to tell you a little bit more about the activities the students have been doing and why we've been doing it this week. Okay, welcome to the science department. This is our uh, science fair, which is the number year sevens and year eights. It's to the year eights are doing Islam and science, and uh, we are, the year sevens are doing anything they want to do research. So the different types of projects in there. This is all part of to stimulate the young. Uh, GNT children into thinking original stuff and then researching their programs out. This was initiated by Mr. Tony Dean from uh, uh, King Edward School, and he so that basically we got all the techniques from him to sort out the the two year groups to start uh, stimulating themselves through this particular type of uh, fair. Um, so I hope you all enjoy. It. Thank you known as the father of modern surgery. He created many surgical instruments. Right. Abu al-Zahrawi, his long name is actually Abu al-Qasim Khalif ibn al-Abbas al-Zahrawi and he was born in 936 AD. He created many mo modern surgical instruments as Hamza said and he was born in Spain. He is known as the father of modern medicine and one of the greatest scientists from the Islamic world. He also created an encyclopedia um, Called Atastif. In it, he included um, in it, he included nu nu nutrition, su su surgery, and medicine, and much more. Um, he also included detailed descriptions of numerous surgical procedures. One of his most famous <coughs> um, surgical instruments was the forceps. The forceps were used in childbirth to deliver the baby. Another one of his instruments that he created was called the cat gut. The cat gut is used for internal stitching and is in the shape of a hoop with a needle attached to it. This was used when any bleed, when during surgery any organs were bleeding. In order to stitch them back up, he would use this instrument. He also created all the surgical instruments that doctors use today. So this man is very known for his his is very known for his intelligence. Um, he was he was known to Al Hakam the second as his court physician. This the. Uh, any questions you may have, we'll happily answer them now. Hello ladies and gentlemen. When the word scientist comes to mind personally, instantly, a Caucasian male in a lab coat comes to my mind. As stereotypes are still as strong as they are in the history of science, to make a stand against this filthy nature, my co-worker, who is currently in Morocco sipping on coconuts, chilling on the beach, um, wrote and researched about this amazing Arabian scientist, Ibn Sina. Ibn Sina, aka Avancena, was born in 9, 980 AD uh, in Afsana, in a village near Bukhara, the capital of Samandate, a Persian dynasty. Ibn Sina's independent thought was served by an extraordinary intelligence and memory which brought him to where he is today. He turned to medicine at 16 and not only learned medical theory but also got Jewish uh, attendance of the sick had, according to his own account, discovered new methods of treatment. He says, and I quote, I soon made great progress. I became an excellent doctor and began to treat patients using approved remedies. The youthful scientist the youthful scientist's fame quickly spread and he treated many patients without asking for payment. Ibn Sina's first appointment was that of a physician to the Emma Nu II. Ibn, as a reward for treating all of these patients, he was allowed access to a library. When the library was destroyed by fire not long after, the enemies of Ibn Sina had framed him for this crime. He has been blamed for this. In, in 999, when the, when the Samanids were conquered by the Ghaznavids, the Ghaznavids turned out not to be so supportive of science. Ibn Sina left his home and travelled further west looking for rulers who supported him. Ibn Sina died in Persia 
on 1037 AD when he was 58 years old of some sort of digestive problem. Ibn Sina will always be remembered as an amazing scientist and a generous man. Well, thank you very much indeed to Mr. Parrick and those students who's told us a little bit about what they've been doing in the science fair this week. We've had a large number of activities running this week. There was an Aston University science trip earlier in the week, and also students have been developing their love of science throughout a range of practical activities throughout the course of the year. But uh, that's it for this week's Golden Hillock School's Golden Moments. But we'll see you for the final episode, which will be next week, episode 39, when we will sign off the air forever. But until next week, it's have a very pleasant weekend and um, look after yourself. Thank you.